Someone on Reddit asked, how can I model something like this? So I wanted to go over my thought process and trying to recreate it. I was able to get some success in it, as well as using that techniques I learned from this to be able to do some little bit more exotic type bases. So to start off, I make the general cross-sectional area and use a circular pattern all the way around to make kind of those ridges. So my thought process behind what I intend to do is use a sweep with a rail. When you use a sweep, and if you're using a sweep with a rail, you need a general shape. And that base seemed like it was uniform, although not the size was uniform, the shape was uniform throughout. It was just kind of warped. So we're gonna make that shape, that if you were to just cut it like, a, take a knife right through, making that pattern initially. So after we make that pattern, we're gonna prep kind of the sweep, which we're gonna go nine degrees from that original sketch and we're gonna use splines. For the splines, I chose to use three, three points. This first one is gonna be the um, kind of the guide, or not the guide, it's gonna be the rail. So this is gonna be the center point through it. So the center of the vase is gonna kind of go along this line uh, this is my second attempt at this. The first one crashed, so I kind of have a little bit of a rough idea of what it should look like. Still going to take some adjusting, but kind of get it a little bit sweet to one side, a little offset, uh, have the very base slanted out a little bit. Uh, then I'm going to use a second spline. Also do three points, and this is going to be uh, how essentially wide it's going to be at each of these points as it sweeps up. At the very base, it is wider, so I'm kind of sticking that out just a little bit, angling it out just a tiny bit so it has like a little bit more of a base to it, and then kind of having it protrude out in the center and then back in at the very top. Um, but you're going to see this is not going to be really that close to the desired shape, and it's going to take a lot of adjusting. So once I kind of get a roughish pattern, I'm gonna use a sweep. Uh, right here, I am selecting everything, and this is a big mistake because my computer thought for about five minutes and then froze. So undid that, and I'm just gonna use the inside shape. A little bit simpler. And then I'm gonna use that center line as the path and the outer line as the guide rail. And you can see, it kind of has that warped shape to it. Doesn't look quite like a vase yet. Um, these ones are much more artistic. They, it looks like whoever made them initially spent a lot of time trying to adjust where those lines were to get that exact curvature. But I can adjust it as I go by turning these on, or turning the previous sketch on. And for some reason in Fusion, to be able to see the uh, tangent, lines I had to keep activating or deactivating then activating them so they would appear and I can adjust them from this point and then I'm just kind of going one one by one throughout the entire thing uh, figuring out where I kind of want to protrude out and then come back in spent quite a bit of time on this part trying to get the shape just how I want it wasn't completely happy with how the shape turned out but I can see with enough effort in trying to get the perfect vase, the perfect shape that you're going for, the right artistic touch, you could use a technique like this to get those desired results. But I keep working it a little bit to get a little closer to that original shape. And then you'll notice that the lines on the model I'm currently working on are all kind of vertical. Whereas in the photo, those lines are a little bit kind of curved around the vase a little bit. So to do that, uh, we're gonna have to move the splines kind of around in 3D. Right now we're working with both of those splines on a single plane, uh, but what I'm gonna wanna do is rotate them kind of around the very top. So I'm gonna take the top point, rotate it a little bit around the top circle, and you can see that kind of twists it, but that throws everything out of kind of where you want it. So I'll move the second one a little bit around and that will give it kind of this spiral shape as it goes up. 
and then a little bit more adjusting to get closer to the shape. Uh, one thing I didn't try that I think would be interesting would be to just use two point splines. Uh, that would probably give a more consistent curve throughout. Uh, but the third point does give you a little bit, a little bit of control, but a slightly less continuous or smooth curve throughout. And finally, I'm going to hollow it out, kind of figure out the right thickness, go with a couple millimeters. And I'll save this step for last because it would take a little bit longer to compute while adjusting each of those points. This might be how they ended up making it uh, with a little bit of extra effort at the very end of rounding a few of the edges. I like this technique a lot, so I wanted to do something a little bit more complex. So that's what I'm trying here of doing a knot face. Uh, so I'm going to take these points and do many more than the three. And try to do a two dimensional knot and then use the move command to push those around and kind of warp it around. So one thing, uh, one thing I kind of learned in doing this is to start small, make the knot very loose and use extra space, just get the general shape down. And then after you kind of have it, routed through where you want it. Uh, you start tightening the knot down by moving each of those points in and each of the guide rails in and slightly making it thicker in certain spots. I also wanted to kind of like flare out the very top of it. And when you start moving these splines around in 3D, you have to move the tangent lines around in 3D and it gets pretty chaotic at times. This is why I went with just a, um, a round circle vase instead of anything with edges on it because it is also rotating around and had some issues with computing when I tried to do more complex shapes. You can see I'll adjust one part and then like the top part will go out of or will look sort of weird. Then I might adjust the top and the middle will look weird. I'm also getting a lot of errors as I'm doing this where it's uh, either intersecting or becoming too thin in certain parts. So it's a lot of trial and error and trying to make this work. It, whenever I get an error, I go back to the previous known spot where it was good, but you can kind of see over time it's starting to tighten into a little bit more of a knot. And I didn't want to leave it so that it wasn't really intersecting, but a big thing I like to do with a lot of my designs is 3D print them. And if I was going to 3D print this, I'd probably have it all intersect just a little bit. So you wouldn't have to worry as much about the strength of it. Uh, I'd also go with a much wider base, like kind of a wide base that kind of tapers in and then for the knot part and then tapers back out for where it's holding the plant. And this is also hollow throughout the entire thing. Uh, one suggestion I'd have would be kind of slicing it towards the very top hollowing out the top piece and then joining it all together again so that you just have kind of the base at the very top and the rest is solid because if you're actually going to hold something in here, you don't really want the water to be running all the way through. Uh, went with the marble-ish texture because I think that kind of gave you a decent amount of detail or lets you kind of see the shape a little bit more. So I like trying to recreate this because it kind of flex a few uh, fusion muscles where I don't typically use splines too much. They can be a little bit, a little bit daunting. They have a lot of degrees of freedom. You move one point around, the other points move. Uh, typically it's more of a free form type of design as opposed to being very dimensional with each of the lines. But I think it turned out kind of cool and I can see this being used in other aspects of design. So, if you like this type of thing, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.